Well, what a race in prospect now to round off the track action here at the end of what has already been a thoroughly enjoyable opening day of the 2015 Beijing World Championships, the men's 10,000 metres. Kenanisa Bekele, the imperious Kenanisa Bekele, the world record holder, four times a champion from 2003 to 2009. And Great Britain's Mo Farah is here aiming to defend the title. But will Jeffrey Kipsang Kamwaror be the athlete to stop him? He's a brilliant, strong runner. Mo Farah, on paper the favourite, 3.28 over 1,500 metres. But Kamwaror is the reigning world half marathon champion. He's the reigning world cross country champion. And he says he's going to take this out hard enough to run the sting out of anyone's finish. And by that, he means Mo Farah's finish. Well, it's an interesting fact, though, that uh, a Kenyan hasn't won this event since 2001. That was Charles Kamathi with uh, 27.53. When he beat the Ethiopian, he beat, when he beat the Ethiopians, there's a Gebu and Gebri Selassie. So if he does it today, that'd be a great performance for Kenya. Ethiopia, the only nation really to have a clean sweep in this event. That was in the 2003 World Championships. Akili, Gebri Selassie and Shaheen, all three still on the podium there. Well... Part of the evidence to support Kamwaror, apart from the fact that he's won a global title in each of the last two years, as we look at uh, Osman there, 13th in the World Cross Country Championships earlier this year, Youth Olympic gold medalist back in 2010 in Singapore, so the Eritreans used to competing in tough, sticky conditions. But one of the reasons people are thinking that Mo Farah may be put under pressure by Kamwaror is that he ran a world best at altitude, 27-11. Now, I know that's a different context, but even if you took off 45 seconds, you normally, the rough rule of thumb is somewhere between 45 seconds and a minute. That is way quicker than Farah has ever run for 10,000 metres. But this is a major championship, and it's a tall, tall ask to take it out right from the beginning. I think sometimes people put too much store on the altitude performances. It doesn't always equate sometimes, and I think that it was a good performance, no doubt about it. But when you come down to a championship event, as we saw in the, in the marathon, sometimes times or performances do not really count. It's about competition. Well, there's Galen Rupp, Olympic silver medalist back in 2012. Just missed out on a medal in two years ago in Moscow, Amane Murga, a brilliant cross-country runner, got a bronze in Punta Umbria two years ago, and he picked up a bronze behind Mo Farah on that sweltering night in Daegu back in 2011. If he's sharp, he's a danger. Mo Farah, the double Olympic champion, the double world champion, the double European champion. This is the first instalment in what he hopes will be a rerun of 2012 when he produces the Mobot and wins the 5 and the 10. But will this be his toughest test in a major championship 10,000 metres so far? Just got a glimpse of Kuroki Machiru. He finished second in that amazing race at altitude. Behind this fella, Jeffrey Kipsang Kamwaror, the world half marathon champion, the world cross country champion. He's a 206 marathon runner. He can't run a 1500 in 328. But can he produce a pace hard enough and sustained enough to put Mo Farah under pressure before the race falls into the Britain's hands in the last two or three laps? We are about to find out. 25 fascinating laps of the track. What a race and what a way to finish the opening day. Farah's in the mood, but so too are the Kenyans. And this six and a quarter miles in old-fashioned money is off and running. And it really will be fascinating to see if Jeffrey Kamwaror does indeed decide to hit the front early and really take it on. Oh, look at that. Kamwaror leads. Rupp's tucked in behind him. And who's there in second place? Mo Farah as Tanui. The other Kenyan comes over. He got a bronze behind Mo Farah two years ago in Moscow. And that's just interesting because quite often what we see in these races is Farah just gets a little bit of bumping and barging going on there as he gets boxed in. Quite often in these races, Steve, 
Farah goes way off the back for the first few laps, but maybe he's taken the threat from Kamwaraw seriously enough to make sure he's there in case the Kenyan wants to strike. Well, Kamwaraw's not really running at any rhythm that's going to affect, I don't think, Bo Farah at the moment. Tanui's teammate just closing in behind him there, so the two up front at the moment, and you can see Mo's in about, to what is he, sixth or seventh place behind those athletes. The pace, I don't think, there it is, a 68 first lap is not going to do any damage to anybody, really. No, it's pretty pedestrian at the moment, but it'll be interesting to see. That's around 28-20 uh, pace. It'll be interesting to see how quickly they do decide to wind it up, if indeed they are as good as their word. So it's Tanui leading at the moment. Kenta Murayama in second place. We do sometimes see this from the Japanese athletes. They like to front run and they like to get in the mix, knowing that perhaps they haven't got the sprint at the end. Good athlete, Murayama. He was sixth in the... World Junior 10,000 metres a couple of years ago. But it's Tanui leading at the moment. Murayama is in second place. And Jeffrey Kipsang Kamwaraw is tucked in on the kerb. And there's no sign of this huge injection of pace just yet. And Mo Farah, the defending champion, the Olympic champion, is quite happy now to sit right back in the middle of the pack and just coast along. And it's Kenya 1, Kenya 2, Kenya 3, with Amane Murga in fourth place. And they are just beginning to wind this up, and they are definitely working together, the Kenyans at the front of the field. Mo Farah, just, you can make him out, he's working his way through the pack there, just to close the gap. One of the first athletes to go for the water. Remember, we saw that in Osaka in 2007. They laid on as many opportunities to hydrate as possible. Although we are coming up to 9 p.m. local time, it's still pretty warm and muggy here. And the athletes respecting the conditions. We've seen team tactics before in 10,000 meter races, but with the reputation that Mo Farah has been gathering over the last couple of years and the knowledge that he can run a flat 15 under 3.30, which he's now done twice, We've seen the East Africans unusually intimidated and unwilling to take it on, but that isn't what we're witnessing here today. They're sharing it around. That's Tanui now who's gone to the front. Well, the kilometre splits, 2.52 and then a 5.32, so that's a 2.52 and then a 2.40, and that last lap was 63.69. And so was the one before that, so that, that's the sort of pace they're picking up now. Sharing it out, Tanui, leading them through. Kenyans just looking up at the scoreboard, maybe checking where everybody is behind them. You can see Farah just bobbing along in the middle of that pack. Gaila Rapp is in about sixth place, the American there, also running well. Very comfortable, the tall American in the red strip. Berg up, it is the Ethiopian, just chasing the three Kenyans now. Well, Ishmael Juma, the Tanzanian, has dropped out. I was just checking to see what his pedigree was. He uh, hasn't registered a 10,000 metres on the track this year. He was here courtesy of a, a great performance at the World Cross. That was elsewhere in China, in Guiyang in March. He finished ninth, so he takes no further part in this race. And it's Kenya 1, Kenya 2, Kenya 3, and still Amane Murga just tracking in on the inside. And Ali Kaya going well, the youngster from Turkey who produced the 5 and 10,000 metre double at the European Under-23 Championships earlier this year. Well, it started out around about the 28-20 pace, but they're now dropping it down to well under that. They're running at about 27-40, 27-30 pace. So they really are starting to wind it up. Whether that's going to be enough, though, because Mo can run under that, really, quite comfortably. And he's still, at the moment, running quite uh, easily in about 12th place, as he always does in these races. Likes to run in the middle of the field, gets him out of all the trouble. All he has to do is keep tracking all the time. Well, at least they are as good as their word, and we're seeing a different dynamic. It, it's not really since the days of Zerzane Tedesse trying to hammer Kenanisa Bekele's sprint finish that we've seen a race taken on like this. 8.15, so it's around 27.30 pace. So they have picked up by about 40 seconds in terms of the scheduled pace, and it can only get quicker, you suspect, over the next few laps. But we haven't seen aggressive running like this in a 10,000-metre major championship final since the likes of Zerzane Tedesse. It's a declaration of intent. The gauntlet's being laid down. OK, it's not super, super fast at the moment, but they're winding it up. They're hoping to ask a few questions of the British world and Olympic champion.
Well, there you go. Another 64, 65 as it was. So there's slight, slightly slowing of the pace from that initial sort of 63 as they were pumping out, but uh, still reasonable. Kamwaraw still leads. Tanui just fighting for second place with Murga. And we have a group of 13 who are away and clear from the rest of the field. Kamwaraw's done most of the work on his own. There he is, glancing up at the big screen. Galen Rupp has closed the gap. He's running in the middle with that familiar red strip. And just behind Galen Rupp, his training partner out in Oregon, Mo Farah. And after a couple of laps, when Camel Raw was at the front, Farah moved through the field, going past about six or seven athletes, just to make sure he's in pole position. It's a good pace, but Steve Ovet, it still doesn't look as though it's enough at the moment to give Farah obvious problems. No, it's, only, well, it's not even halfway through the race, though, so there's plenty of time yet if you're going to inject anything. That kilometre 2.43, so the time there, 13.40, which are giving you time of about to 27.20, but they're going to pick it up, I think, on the second half of the race. Well, it's interesting, those last uh, kilometre splits after that slow first one, 2.40, 43, 42, 43. In other words, it's level pace. If there's going to be a big change, someone has to do a surge, but it's too early for that, Steve. I think so, yeah, I think so. I think Galen Rupp... Uh, Mo Farah's training partner there came through past Mo actually at one stage and decided to keep himself up there with that group of five. It's Ali Kaya of Turkey that's the other athlete we haven't mentioned yet in the white strip and the black shorts. He's running very well there in about fourth place. Very good run from the Turkish youngster, European indoor champion over 3,000 metres. But it's Tanui who's at the front at the moment. But they're doing a good job, but to be honest, this sort of pace is the sort of thing that uh, someone like Mo Farah will lap up. Them doing all the work and him just following behind isn't going to do any real damage to him, really. It's just good pacemaking. They've got to do more than this if they want to take the string out of someone like Mo Farah. They've got to start piling it on much faster. Berger is still there in fourth. Galen Rupp running well, the tall American in fifth at the moment and just behind him his training partner there he is Mo Farah looking up looking very very comfortable indeed at this sort of rhythm okay and now I'm afraid just dropping off the pace so it's down now to six thunderous noise going round the stadium a 64 and a half second lap there three Kenyans followed by an Ethiopian followed by Galen Rupp trying to come up onto the shoulder of Imane Murga. And Murga has a brilliant finish if he's in the mood and he's still got the energy. So Rupp is fifth and Farah sixth and a little gap just opening up. Yes, although the Ethiopians, and that's Idris next, um, are beginning to narrow the gap. Uh, Idris has passed Kaya. Idris there, as you say, Peter, just moving up. He senses that there's a big move on here. And I think he's got the capability of closing it down because they're not moving that fast at the moment. Well, a fascinating second half to this race. And Kamwaraw, well, it's not an electric pace, but he's been as good as his word. And they're not sitting around waiting for Farah to strike in the closing stages. They're going for it here and they're turning this into a really good, hard, honest race. 16-22. So they're, they're sort of getting towards 27-minute territory. Bearing in mind, Farah's lifetime best is just uh, around high 26, 26, 45-ish, 46. But still a 241, six kilometres, so they're still fairly level when you look at each kilometre. Well, Farah's already run 26.50 this year in Eugene, and this sort of pace is... Uh, bread and butter to him at the moment even Gala Rupp is looking very comfortable in third place but it's interesting Steve that when you look back over the fastest times in history over 10,000 meters hardly any of them have come in the last four seasons in fact in the last three seasons only one athlete in the world has run quicker than Farah and that's Galen Rupp just by a couple of seconds but that is a bit misleading because the great, great times, the real scorchers from the likes of Tedesse and Bekele and Gabri Selassie were seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. Right, but one of the reasons is that most of those came in the great Van Damme meeting, which had a 10,000 metres every year, and they haven't had it recently. And that's when they really went for fast times. Kamwaraw and Tanui 
still pushing the pace. For the first time, we've seen one of the Kenyans dropping back. Kuroki Muchiru is now in fifth place. So we have Kamwaraw Antonui, Galen Rupp, Mo Farah and Kuroki Machiru just maybe struggling a little bit as Edris, Idris starts to try and close the gap. Well, no, the gap's really opened up, the two Ethiopians. Yes, he's moved up to sixth. Ethiopian sixth and seventh, but look how far back they are. It's five men. It is now, yeah, no question about that. The three Kenyans are doing their best, really, to break up the training partners, as it were, of Farah and Rupp. Rupp now, sorry, Farah now decides to look at them and take the pace up. Well, this is not fast. Do you think this is fast? He says, come on, let's move it on then. Wow, this is great. This is what distance running fans want to see. Farah just goes to the front to say, I'm still comfortable. I'm still in contention. This is my title. You've got to wrestle it off me. And no sooner has he done that, Kamwaraw says, I don't like that. I'm not allowing you to boss this race. I'm the world half marathon champion. I'm the world cross country champion. And I believe I've got the strength to run the sting out of your finish. This is a fascinating race. But Farah took, I mean, it was a 65-85, the slowest lap for a while. And Farah just showed, hey, this is not good enough, chaps. And uh, Kamwara got the message. Well, he did, but he's still not injecting a significant no. pace. He is a cross country runner. You know, he is a half marathon runner. He is not a 338, 1500 meter runner. That's the difference. That's what Mo has got in his legs if he has to. And they really got to start putting in sort of almost suicidal laps now if they're going to break him. They really have. I was just going to say, it, it, it's got to come very, very soon, hasn't it? Because we're now coming up to seven laps to go. He's clearly beginning to hurt. They all will be. It's a, it's a brutal night. It is still very, very muggy, even though it's ten past nine in the evening local time. They've got to really start hurting him now to put the doubts in his mind. Fascinating thing, his biggest danger could come from Galen Rupp. Not the, not the Kenyans. Galen Rupp has a finish. Galen Rupp, if he's got the confidence to go past his training partner, could be the big damage here. Just don't know. Let's wait and see. What we can say, I think, with some certainty is that Camel Raw is a wonderful athlete with huge amounts of stamina and endurance but he is not a sprinter and he knows it. So he's got to find something else soon here if he's to come up with a plan to put Farah under pressure. And now, no sooner have we said that, Kuroki Machiru, he's obvious because he wears the blue spikes. He gets his turn to go to the front. Farah just looks around, Rupp is right behind him. And once again, we have Kenya 1, 2 and 3, then Great Britain, then the United States. It's a quintet of excellence, but something's got to give. Well, they're doing their best, the three Kenyans, they really are. They're trying their best to uh, take this thing out of the world champion, Olympic champion, but uh, they're not doing much at the moment. He's bobbing around there in fourth place. Galen Rupp just uh, clipping his heels, actually, in fifth. Well, it was another 65-second lap. They just haven't been able to maintain the sort of pace they need if they're really going to break this up, and they don't look as if they can. Interesting that uh, Kuroki took it on because he suddenly realised, hey, this is getting slower and slower. I've got to help do something about it. It's got to be I... sub-63 if you're going to do any damage. It really has. I think they were starting to talk to each other then. N not a full-blown conversation, but a few words were exchanged there between Camaraw, and look how much the damage of the pace has done. Amane Murga is a world cross-country silver medalist and he is walking round the track. There have been some high-profile casualties here. The athlete they're about to lap is in all sorts of trouble here. Akwelu Aleu, 10th in the World Cross Country Championships earlier this year. He's, well, he's not at a standstill, but uh, he's virtually running at my pace. He needs to move out and let them get on with it here. The pace has been brutal, and once again, it's Jeffrey Kipsang Kamalroor who's at the front, Farah in second, then Tanui. But the last kilometre, 2.47, second slowest of the race. Yeah. And I don't know whether you noticed that there. Mo Farah was beckoning Rupp to come through. He was motioning with his right arm. Come on, I reckon we've got this. Stay with me. They're obviously really, really good friends competing against each other in terms of nationality here, but they clearly put a lot of miles and a lot of hard work in together. Oh, one and two at the Olympics. Yeah can't be better than that and they're doing almost the same here. Kem Karua looking up at the scoreboard by the shadow. 
that he's tried to lose for the last, what is it, 18 or so, so 21 laps or so, is still there of Mo Farah. Gaylor oh. Rupp, though, look, is uh, also looking very, very comfortable in third place now. And Rupp has never won a World Championship 10,000 metre medal. Amazing to come home behind Farah in that 10,000 metres in London. Well, I think he could be the first non-African runner to win uh, a medal since 1987 if he does it here in these championships. And that was when Panetta finished second, the Italian. And uh, Farah goes to the front. Camerall has to check his stride. There's great, great psychological exchanges going on there. Every time Farah's gone to the front so far, Camerall has gone straight back to the lead. But crucially, he hasn't done anything definitive just yet. All five are still there. Farah just got clipped there by Galen Rupp. That's why he's moving out, trying to make sure that nothing like a clipped heel brings his title defence to an end. And now they're bunching, Steve. And I think even Camerall is beginning to get tired and beginning to sense that, try as he might, he can't break Farah. Well, three laps to go. and We're into Mo's territory now. This is the sort of speed that, uh, and the distance that the 1500 meter runner in Mo Farah will lap up, really. He's trying his best, really, Karol, but he hasn't really done any major damage, I don't think, at any stage of this race to the likes. And the calibre of Mo Farah. Camerall leads. Farah in second place. Tanui third. Machiru just looks as though he's getting a little tired, they're getting caught up in a bit of traffic as well, going past one of the Japanese athletes who they're lapping. There are athletes strewn all around the track, the pace has been brutal. Gabius, the German, is trying to hang on for a little ride, but he really needs to get out the way and let them do the battle for gold, silver and bronze. Kamwaraw, Farah, Rupp, then comes Tanui, and then Machiri at the back of that group of five, and now Steve Obet, there's only just over 800 metres to go. It is almost all over, really. As I said, the biggest danger, I think, for Mo Farah could come from his uh, training partner, because Rupp's looking very comfortable there in third place. But you're all, really, he's got to run, what, almost a sub-150, I think, here, to get rid of Mo Farah in the last two laps, and he's not doing that, really. Well, every time Farah has gone to the front, Camerall has resisted or if indeed the Briton has taken the inside line, Camerall's come straight back round on his outside. They're queuing up now, they sense. Now they've got to give it absolutely everything, but Farah is in his comfort zone here. He is so quick, and on paper, he's the fastest of the five still here, but let's not rule out Galen Rupp. He's had a good season. He's the American champion. And Farah now glances over his shoulder. This time he goes to the front. And this time, Kamwaraw is unable to re-seize the initiative. The Olympic champion, the world champion, hits the bell in front. Inside the last 400 metres, it's the men's 10,000 metres. A brilliant race. Jeffrey Kipps and Kamwaraw has really taken it to Mo Farah. And he accidentally clipped his heels there. Farah will be angry here. Galen Rupp is just beginning to go backwards a little bit. Farah is running brilliantly here. His long loping stride. But look at Kamwaraw. We didn't think he had a sprint towards the end of the race. But he's hanging on to Mo Farah, the Olympic champion, the world champion. This perhaps is going to be his hardest earned gold if he's able to win. And look at Tanui coming on the outside. Farah looks over his shoulder, he glances left, he glances right, he's anxious. Camerall is putting a great, great effort in here, but Mo Farah is going to defend his world title. A simply brilliant race from the Briton and from the Kenyan, but try as they might, Camerall just couldn't quite do enough to run the sting out of the legs of Mo Farah, who has now defended his title in style. Olympic 10,000 metre champion in 2012, world 10,000 metre champion in 2013 and in 2015. And I think that's the one he's had to earn the hardest. Jeffrey Kipsang Camelraw turned that into a superb race. He thoroughly deserves his silver medal, but Farah was not to be denied the gold again. 
once again a fantastic last lap by Mo Farah. He ran, ran uh, the first 200 metres in 28.1 and then 26.3 to come home in a 54 and a half second lap. Yeah, it's a great last lap, really, but uh, I don't think after the, well, the first, well, well, coming into the last four or five laps, Peter, I don't think there's any question who was going to win it, really. But were you not surprised, because I was, how well Camelroy managed to hang on to him on the last lap? Because he's not a sprinter, he's run marathons, he's a cross-country specialist. He made, he turned that Camelroy into a brilliant, brilliant race. But he tried his best. I think Mo Farah was always going to win the race. I, I'm with you. Yeah. But it was a fine performance by all Kenyans. Full credit to them. They yeah. all ran very they well. They did, they did, they did exactly what, what they, they had to try yeah. and do. They just weren't as good as this. One of the greatest runners we have ever seen as a distance runner. Well, I've, I've never seen Galen Rupp look so exhausted at the side of the track. He's sitting. He's the athlete just being treated to the bottom left-hand side of your screen. He's an absolutely spent force. What a race. I think Galen Rupp really did a, a good job. He did all he had to, really. It was on the last lap that devastated him. That change of pace, as you said, Peter, 54 last lap, really was just too much for him to handle. But he was always up there. He thoroughly deserved that win, Mo Farah. But I think he had to work a little harder for that one than he has for one or two of the others, perhaps. The question is, and I'm sure the answer is yes, has this taken anything out of him for the 5,000 metres? Well, time will tell, but it was a fine race. Five men under 27.10. That's really excellent because it's hot weather. It's a championship condition. And we often get slow run championship races. This, not world record, but fast. I just thought it was entertaining that they tried to show they weren't intimidated by Farah and tried their best to come up with something slightly different to put him under pressure. Yep, they did all they could. You're very keen, aren't you, to, uh, to say that they did their best, that they did. But as, as uh, Peter said, they weren't good enough to beat this man. It's as simple as that. It's an extraordinary record. Halfway to the double once again. Oh, what a great uh, ending to the day. We had a fabulous marathon this morning. Great 10,000. That wonderful shot put also there. But look, at, look at that particular picture. The smoothness. The grace that Farrow was showing, whereas the others did, seemed to be working so much harder, didn't they? Yeah, just a little trip there was his biggest oh, well, problem, I think, throughout the yeah. whole of that race. At one stage here, it looked as though Tanui might be able to mount something on the outside, but once Farrow turned into the straight, it was only him or Cam Waraw, and there was, as you said, Steve, only ever going to be one winner there when you're dealing with a 10,000-metre runner who's run 3.28 twice for 1,500 metres. <laughs> Thoroughly enjoyable race. And another great golden moment in a growing list of global titles for the greatest British distance runner in history. Well, we'll see uh, plenty of stills of that shot, I'm sure. The sheer delight on his face. Rarely seen him quite as excited as winning as he did today. Good to see the Kenyans waving to the few spectators who are left in the arena. What a thoroughly enjoyable race. A few British supporters have made their way over to China. Being rewarded with an autograph or two from the Olympic champion, who they've just witnessed defending his world crown as well.
Yeah, that wasn't the first time on the last lap that Farah had had his heels clipped. It happened, uh, obviously, accidentally again with uh, Galen Rupp. His face is so expressive when he's in full flow. You can tell there's not much left in the locker there. Brilliant determination. A great celebration for a wonderful champion. Well, he's going his lap of honour. The stadium almost deserted now. The crowd have moved away pretty quickly. Their greatest moment, of course, came when Gong won the shot silver medal. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this opening day of the 15th World Athletics Championship. It's certainly been thoroughly absorbing from the commentary box. Three golds down. I don't know how many left. <laughs> Mo Farah is the champion once again. But what a wonderful effort from Jeffrey Kipsang-Kamwaraw. And Paul Tanui completes the podium.